Hello and welcome everybody, it's Coach Action Jackson and I got another episode of Client Success Stories and I'm bringing back a Hall of Famer. This is Erin. Now, Erin went through the program a long time ago. She got incredible results in the first four months, lost, I think it was like 23 pounds, you know, a bunch of body fat. The before and after photos are shocking and awesome. But here's the thing. She just spent the last year continuing on with the program and she's got even better results. So she's done an incredible job at continuing, making progress. She's gotten stronger. She's gotten leaner. She's gotten more toned. She looks I mean, just incredible, and I want to speak to her about how she's been able to manage the continuous progress over the last year. So, Erin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me back. Now, you're obviously a superstar. You're a Hall of Famer. You you got the incredible result, and now you've even continued it. Like, talk to me through like when you first started. So going back a little bit, you graduate from the program. And my take on the program is, is we're going to do everything we can to try to teach you as much as you possibly need to know so you can manage it on your own. But of course, some people choose to kind of stick around because they just like the results and you chose to stick, which is great. So we've obviously enjoyed working together. But what was that mindset like of the transition going from, I just finished this program and we did a bit of a deload week to pull back and then jumping back in, was it difficult? How did you manage it? What had to shift? Like, how did you just go about that process? Honestly, it was quite easy because the habits had already been established. The routine had already been established. And like, most importantly, this commitment to myself was already in place. So Continuing the program actually felt really natural. Um, what I love about it is, you know, before we hired you, it was like we were jumping around to different programs on tonal, trying to come up with a cohesive long-term strategy, but not really knowing what we were doing. Um, I love that I get up in the morning and I know exactly what I have to do every day. And I don't really even have to think about that. It's all done for me. And then we chat and I say, okay, here's something I want to work on. Here's the next goal. And then you put that into the program for me. So it really does. It was pretty seamless to be quite honest, because putting in the work up front in those first four months, all of that just played in really nicely to continuing on into the future. Got it. So you set the foundation and obviously you got great results. And, and kind of what we did. So if somebody's out there and they're going through a transformation like this, just to tee it up and kind of explain the strategy and the process after you go through a big change is you were a little bit lower on calories because obviously we'd been in a caloric deficit. So mm -hmm. when you're in a caloric deficit, your metabolism slows down. We had you around 1400 and we went into trying to speed that up, give you a little bit more room, wiggle room, so that it didn't feel so restricting for you. So we sped up your, your kind of metabolism by slowly increasing and went through a bit of like a body recomp. Now, for a lot of people, that can be difficult because the scale stops going down. And especially for a lot of my female clients and females out there that I've worked with, the scale is like everything. How did you manage actually seeing the scale go up a little bit over the next few months as we sort of boosted up your metabolism? Well, first of all, it was nice to have the extra calories, right? Like that, I didn't mind one bit. Um, and yeah, the scale definitely went up. So I, I would say probably between June or July when I finished the program and then maybe January or February, I probably added about close to 10 pounds. Um, and did I love that? Not every step of the way. But one thing that did really help me was getting body scans during the process and also continuing to take pictures. So when you do a body scan and you see that some of that weight gain is muscle, like that actually feels really good. And then looking at pictures and saying, yeah, I put on weight, but the way that I look is not really much different than when I finished the program. And I'm getting that with extra calories every day. Um, so I think some of it was just kind of reframing that mindset of like, oh, actually that, that might be muscle and not just fat that you're gaining. And, and I think it is hard, especially as women. Um, I do weigh myself every day for accountability reasons. And since I'm so dialed in these days, like I can see the effect of 
when I get a little bit off track, it, it shows up on the scale and that's probably inflammation, but it's still, it's, it's information, right? It's data. So, um, so not getting so caught up in like the little day-to-day fluctuations, but kind of seeing like what is trending over time was also, has also been really helpful for me. Um, But I'm a data numbers person. Like I like to, if I'm not sure what's going on, like let me get another body scan and actually see what's, what's happening under the surface. So, so that I found was very helpful. And then photos, of course, you know, as you always emphasize. I love that. So you're looking at different things, multiple factors, not just the scale. And that's allowing you to then better process and understand how to put weight in perspective of overall progress. And you're obviously getting some extra calories. Your weight, yes, it's gone up, but the photos aren't changing much and you're getting stronger. You're adding on muscle, which is all obviously very good. You're getting on the scale every day. Now, a lot of data shows that people that get on the scale every day, it desensitizes them to the number. um, And actually, it's usually better for people. Now, of course, there's a minority of people out there that can't do it and it's just too much for them. I have one client who we don't ever get on the scale and that's okay and that works for him. But how did you manage to kind of go from seeing that number and having it be like, oh, like the freak out and everything that happens when sometimes you see the number? How are you able to process that? Was it desensitizing? Was it kind of like exposure therapy by getting on it every day? Or was it just a constant, you saw the number and then you had to try to go and process and say, with the photos and, and try to just think through that? Like, how did you manage it? Yeah, so that's interesting. I um, I do think it is a little bit desensitizing because you know just as quickly as like it'll go up a pound, the next day it'll go down two, and then it'll come back up, and then it, and so I noticed that for me personally, there is a significant amount of day to day fluctuation, um, and so it definitely does desensitize me to that. Um, and you know, I know a lot of that's water retention, or you know, I I know that I didn't eat an excess of thirty six hundred calories to gain a pound of fat in a day, right? Like, I think sometimes the irrational side of our brain takes over, and you know, you you want to beat yourself up about that extra pound on the scale, but you know, once you kind of learn, like, no, you didn't. That that's not what's going on here. Like, let's have a dose of reality and get back, you know, get back to thinking about this clearly. Another thing that I noticed, it's kind of interesting for me, like whenever I do have uh, like extra calories, I'll also see that concurrent with that, my strength score goes up. And then when I go into a cut, it stabilizes. And then when I add more calories, it goes up again. And so it's it's interesting to see these data points. And it's like, just because the weight is going up doesn't mean that you're not doing good things for yourself, right? Like um, it shows up in other ways. So you, you do kind of have to dissociate a little bit from just relying strictly on the scale. Like how do your clothes fit? You know, are, are your, are your pants getting tight? And even if they are, maybe that's muscle. So I love how you threw out there that number of 3,600, you know, it's like 34, 35, 3,600, somewhere in there is what you know, a pound of, of fat is in terms of number of calories. And number one, you know that. And then number two, you were able to make that association. So when you see the number on the scale, you're able to say, okay, I didn't eat that many calories. I know it. I didn't go to Mastro's and just eat an entire butter cake by myself. So I'm probably okay on this. So that's really good. That's like the difference between like fast and slow thinking. You're able to slow down. You're able to tap into your prefrontal cortex. You're able to get a little bit more logical about things and make that make that conclusion, which is great. And also noticing, I think it's it's really interesting. Now, we've been really lucky here where a lot of our clients that go through the program, yes, they want to lose weight and typically body fat, but a lot of times they get stronger, absolutely stronger. Now, there's relative strength and there's absolute strength. Relative strength means that if you get lighter, your weight decreases, your strength stays the same. And that's relatively getting stronger. Now, if your strength goes down, obviously you're getting a little weaker, but also absolute strength. If, you're, if your weight goes down and you also get stronger, that's absolutely getting stronger. So I love that you're able to make that distinction and you're able to understand how that works and say, well, yes, maybe the weight is up a bit, but I know that's causing these other really positive things to happen also in my body and in, in my life. And that's good. It's looking for what's working and seeing how you're winning. And it's one of the things that we try to talk about a lot is let's figure out, and if you had to say that you were winning, if you had to make a win, what would that be? Because the more ways we can see that we're winning, the more likely we are to stay in the game. And the more we stay in the game, 
obviously the better results that we're going to get. And you're, of course, a shining example of that. So now how, as you're kind of going through this process, so then the way comes up a bit and, and we're kind of going through it. Then we did a bit more of a mini, uh, a mini cut and we kind of brought it back down, but we were able to do that without cutting the calories too dramatically down. So how, how did you kind of manage that? And what was that like physically, mentally, emotionally, where you saw things, you know, improving in, in the weight coming down without the calories coming down so far? Yeah. So in, I think this happened like right after we got back from our Disney trip. So I allowed myself to just indulge and enjoy myself while I was there. But then I got back and I was like, all right, time to get back to business. Like we're getting ready to get into the summertime. This was like February time frame. And, you know, I just kind of looked at where it would be the easiest for me to take away like 200 calories, I think was what, what, what I cut. Um, and there were some, like I would have sweet potatoes at lunch. And so I just took that out and um, left everything else pretty much the same. Um, and was I a little bit more hungry at times? Yeah. Sometimes I would just drink more fluid or, you know, sometimes it was just a boredom issue and it wasn't like that I was truly hungry. Um, sometimes I find too, that if I, if I'm able to time my meals a little differently, like if I can start my breakfast a little bit later in the day and then, you know, kind of push all my meals uh, later, then I can, I can manage that a little bit better, almost like an intermittent fast, but not officially. Um, so yeah. And, and, and then to be able to see that it works, right? Like, again, I am a data person. So when I, now I know that I can do that. So it's like, I know that I can maybe do an excess of calories, put on some uh, muscle, and then later on decide to go into a cut and, you know, maybe lose some fat. And so I, I think like just knowing that, that uh, again, this, there's no finish line here. Like there's no ultimate goal for me. Do I have small goals that I want to achieve along the way? Sure. Um, and right now I'm very happy. Like if I did nothing else and just maintained where I'm at right now, I'd be delighted. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled with where I am and, and the goals that I've already achieved. Um, but I think again, like what a lot of probably your client clients realize is like, it's not like you do all of this and then you're like, okay, great. And then you just stop and go back to your old ways. Like that person doesn't exist anymore. Right. Like I'm, I'm a new person now, like who does things differently and this is the person that it takes to achieve my ongoing goals. Right. So, um, so I think that just kind of, it, there's, it's, it's interesting how many aspects of life this has impacted for me. Really? Okay. I want mm -hmm. to talk about a couple of things there. So I want to definitely get into the mindset of like how you've been able to just manage things over the long term, the transitions you mentioned there though, I'm a different person now. Mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? So I think, um, I have just developed so many new and better habits that I don't ever even see myself going back to the way that I used to do things like, and again, it's, it's partly just a, a commitment that I've made to myself. Like, do I get up every morning, like super excited to go work out? No. Like what I rather sleep in most days I get, I'm, I get up at like 3.30 or 4 o'clock most, most days to, to get my workout in. So yeah, I would much rather like keep on sleeping, but like I have a limited amount of time to get that workout in and I do it before work so that nothing else gets in the way. Um, and it's just, it's not even really a decision. Like I know I'm going to do it every day. It's not even like I have to go through that thought process. Like it just has to get done. Um, it's like brushing my teeth. Like it's just part of what I do every day. Um and that, that was not the person I was, you know, years ago. Um, it was sort of like, well, do I feel like doing it today? Uh, I'll do something. I, you know, I might go for a run or whatever. Um, How did you make that shift? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, when it comes to the, the, the diet side of things, like, I just feel so much better with the foods that I eat now. And I love that with your program, it really is like you kind of have to figure it out. Because like, I'm not somebody that's going to be happy sitting down and eating a chicken breast three times a day. Like I just, I don't love sitting down and eating a big hunk of chicken. Like that's, I, that wouldn't be sustainable for me. So finding the things that I, I like to eat, like I genuinely look forward to 
every meal that I eat. Like, and it's taken some iterations to get there. And I'm kind of boring. I eat basically the same thing every day, but it makes it easy to track my my macros because I I know what weight of everything I need to to, to hit my goals. But um, but just knowing how much better I feel, and when I do deviate, how it changes how I feel. Um, those are just data points, and I gather those, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, I just am a better version of myself when I do these things, and so that's the person I want to continue to be. I love that. That's so fantastic. Number one, you mentioned there about like, it's not even a decision. So, so many people give themselves a decision and there's this saying out there. It's like 99% commitment is like a pain in the ass, but a hundred percent is easy because at 99%, there's always that option, that decision of like, should I, or shouldn't I, should I work out? Should I stick to the diet? Should I deviate? Should I have some drinks? Should I sleep in? But a hundred percent is there is no other decision. It's the burn the boats mentality. You're going forward no matter what, no matter if you're tired, no matter if you're sleepy, no matter if you don't feel like it, you just do it anyway. And so many people can do that in other ways with their kids. Parenting, you don't have a decision. You just wake up and you help and you change the diaper. You help help your kid because you have to. There's no other choice. But when it comes to their health and fitness, oh, I don't know, but they debate with themselves and then they don't follow through. So I love that. And then you also said, I'm a different version of myself. I'm a better version of myself when I do these things. And I feel the exact same way. It's one of the reasons why I don't drink, you know, that much. I have like my two drink limit unless I'm on vacation or something else. But it's just creating these rules for yourself that allow you to be your best self, to show up, to be the leader, to be the example, to do really well at work and, and all these things. I'm a better version when I have these habits. So I totally understand that. And that's awesome. And thinking about yourself as two different versions give you the, gives you the psychological distance to be able to almost jump between them when you need to and say, no, 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 I'm kind of slipping. I'm being kind of the weaker version of Aaron. I need to be the stronger version of Aaron. Let me get, let me get back at it. So I love that too. Now, you also mentioned like the benefits going into other areas of your life? What other areas of your life are you kind of talking about? And how have you thought about that? Yeah. So I I think my, my confidence has really improved. Um, my, my patience, like my ability to deal with my kids when they're, when they're making me crazy, like my stress levels overall are, are much lower. Like I've started a mindfulness meditation practice. Like I, um, I'm a physician. And so I feel like I am better, um, better at taking care of my own patients because I'm taking better care of myself. Um, so I, it's, it's been, and, and it's really interesting, like, you know, people that haven't seen me in a while will be like, what are you doing? And, um, like you look great. I mean, which is, which is really nice. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the external validation, but, um, and, and I think like part of me literally would, you know, I love, still love that still seeks it out, but like, it's becoming more about like, what is, what is this doing for, for me too? Like how, what are the positive benefits that I see for myself? Um, and not just like, you know, those external, you know, circumstances. Yeah. There's this cliche statement that, um, you know, who you become in pursuit of the goal is more important than getting the goal. And when you're thinking about business or you're thinking about fitness, you think, well, that's just something rich people say, or that's something people with six packs say, or bikini bodies or who are really fit. But then once you get to that point, you realize how true and how important it is. And then you say, oh, yes, this is why it has to be a struggle. This is why there has to be a journey and there has to be all these obstacles that I overcome. And maybe you can elaborate on this. This is how I feel. I feel because of all the obstacles I've overcome in pursuit of obviously my fitness, but also my business, that's created the kind of person that can be patient, that trusts himself. And that when I try something new, I say, I know I can do this because I reach into the cookie jar. I pull out a cookie of something else I've done previously. And I say, I know I can do this because I've done X, Y, and Z before. And I trust myself and I'm patient and I've picked up skills and I know I can execute now. Do you kind of feel that? Yes, very much so. Like, um, you know, your, your workouts are tough. I don't think anybody would argue with that. Like, But I always love really like the second week because you've still got, you know, a ways to go before you finish that phase and you already know what you're in for, right? Like you've done that first week. 
but you've done that first week, right? So like you've already proven that you can do it. So I, I always, that's again, little data points that I carry with me, but it's like, I know that I did that first week of workouts. Like I can do it again and again and again and finish this phase. Like it's doable, right? So I love collecting those little data points and it's like doing this is not easy, right? Like this, you know, body recomposition, lifestyle changes, like um, it's not easy. Um, so proving to yourself that you can do it and and also like having more self-control, like, okay, I'm going to just have like a bite of a cookie instead of having two or three of them like I might have had before. Like, okay, there's diminishing returns on the the pleasure of that, those 10th and 11th bites, right? Um, so like just knowing that I have that, that discipline, um, and that I can do these things is, um, just again, something I can carry with me to tons of different aspects of my life. Yeah. I know. I remember having a conversation with you when you said, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with like understanding and acknowledging and maybe even accepting the fact that I'm, I'm never going to be the finished product or that there's no finish line. And a lot of people struggle with that, right? They finish the program. And I don't think anyone thinks that they can just cross the finish line and stop. But I think there's an understanding that I'm going to hit this point where it's like climbing a mountain where you get to the top and then all of a sudden you're done and you've kind of done it. And then you no longer have to continue to work. And that, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. It's like climbing the never ending mountain. You get to the top of Mount Everest and then you look up and then there's another mountain on top of Mount Everest and you're like, Oh my gosh. And you have to kind of find different ways of staying engaged, whether that's playing mind games with yourself or setting other goals and changing the goal or looking at other things. For me, I train a lot more for strength now than I do physique because that's more interesting for me because it's something I haven't done previously. Even sometimes when I've gotten injuries, that could be a very exciting time, as crazy as that sounds, because I know I can make a lot of progress in a short period of time and I can see big gains. So how have you been able to manage like all of this and how have you been able to stay, stay motivated, right? Stay engaged, stay excited, and also continue to measure progress and feel like you're winning? Yeah, this is a, this is a really great question. So I think like you get to, you compare your start of program and then four month photos. And I think everybody is just like, what? I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought I would have even gotten that far in, in that amount of time. Um, and so I think one of the things that had to shift for me was like that, that um, sort of degree of change was not going to be sustainable, right? Like I wasn't going to continue on the path of losing that amount of weight, losing that amount of body fat and all of that. Um, you know, gaining some of the aerobic capacity that I did, like that the changes were going to be more subtle, I think, as time went on, they were happening, but it wasn't as noticeable as it was in those because I had a lot more to lose and more muscle to gain. Like there there was a, a, a bigger delta, I guess, at the beginning uh, of the program. So um So that, you know, you kind of have to take your wins in other ways. Like, yes, I was still seeing, you know, good positive changes aesthetically and all of that. But it's like, oh, I can remember when, you know, I lifted this and it was only I could only do this many pounds and now I can do this many pounds. And remember when you started the program and you couldn't do 200 jumping jacks straight? Like, I think if I tried to do that today, I'd probably be able to do it, um, even though I haven't done that in a while. But just like some of those things that... um, you know, they're just different goals and, and different ways of measuring progress um, have been really helpful for me. Um, and ultimately knowing that I, I'm still going in the dire- direction that I ultimately want to go, you know, even if I'm not seeing those changes on an everyday basis, like I know that I'm putting in the work um, and, and doing the things that I need to do to feel good about myself. So um I'll be really curious to see, you know, two a year from now where I'm at. Like, cause I, I'm, I'm not expecting month to month even to see huge changes. But again, when I went back and looked a year ago, I was like, oh yeah, there's, there's been a lot of change. And so I, again, I, I look forward to seeing what I'll be able to achieve in a year, but it's just kind of have to shift the timeline. Like 
this is not going anywhere for me, like this way of life. So even if the change is slower, I, I, I'm, I've bought in, if that makes sense. Like I've collected enough data that I know this is, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, so I, I, I'm willing to accept that maybe things don't happen as quickly because I, I know that I'm still moving toward where I want to go, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And what we like to say in terms of data on that is, uh, and again, this is not exact scientific, but around four, you can move and, and lose body fat around four times faster than you can gain muscle, right? Because you can lose a pound to two, one to pound, one to two pounds per week, but you certainly can't add one to two pounds of muscle per week, right? You're just talking about a fraction of that that you can actually add on. And then when you're doing body recomposition, it is just going to happen a little bit slower. So in the beginning, you had more to lose and obviously more to gain. You make that big shift. Now you have to focus to a little bit more longer time horizon and also going from just looking at results to now, of course, measuring multiple things, but really focusing on the process, which is what we kind of try to teach you to do. Just like almost like head down, focus on the process. And if you can execute on the process over a long enough time horizon with the course threat strategy, then you're going to see massive wins. And if you can just get even incremental progress and just figuring out ways to win, maybe it's you just hit a PR, maybe it's you got total volume increase, you increase your density, do something a little faster, whatever it is, if you could just find ways of stacking wins to stay engaged, that's going to keep you in the game. And then of course, you're going to get those results. And Again, if we look at any even single week or month over your last year of your transformation that you've had, nothing is like, oh my God, amazing. But then when you look at the entire year, it's like, holy cow, this is incredible. But you had to stick through and focus on the process for that entire year to get to the outcome. And that is certainly a longer time horizon than most people think. But I, I just... I love your story. I love your journey because you're just such an incredible success story of somebody who's just kept getting better. And that's incredible because a lot of people get to a point and they sort of plateau and they don't want to go beyond because they're like either my lifestyle or whatever, like I feel good. How you've been able how have you been able to cultivate and is this something that you're like in every area of your life where you always just want to keep excelling and getting better because it's it's, I love it because that's how I am, but not everybody's like that. Not everybody's built like that. So I'm just fascinated how, if that's every area of your life or just this and like how you've been able to cultivate that. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely, I'd put myself in a little bit of an overachiever category. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I love, um, I love a challenge. I, I love like rising to the occasion. Um, so that I, this goes along very well with that. Um, and, and like the time is going to pass anyway, right? So the, the time can pass and I can, could not get better or the time could pass and I spend that time improving myself. So, um, you know, it's nice to look back at a year and say, yeah, I spent that year working hard, like, uh, and, and it, and it paid off. Right. So, um, it wasn't, all unicorns and rainbows that whole year. Like there were some tough times, but, um, but overall, like I knew that I could keep coming, coming back to it. Right. So like, if I go off course a little bit, then I, I just redirect. I don't let one bad day throw me off of the, off of the wagon altogether. Right. It's like, yeah, we're all going to have those days where we, you know, eat more than we want to, or we're at an event or we're on vacation or whatever. Um, but I'm like ready to get back at it the next day. So um, it's, and I think that's life, right? Like we have to give ourselves some grace and allow for, for those things to happen. And, um, and, you know, I think it can be just kind of as a little aside, like I look at uh, other clients of yours and I'm like, wow, they are killing it. And they're so inspiring. And, um, you know, gosh, like, I wish I could look like that woman or like, she's like looking great. And, um, you know, and it can be easy to be like, well, my genetics are this and that, like my people don't get very muscular. And it's like, I try not to let that slow me down. Like, yeah, you can recognize that that's, that that's the case, but like, I, you know, you got to just keep pushing ahead. 
What's kind of interesting about that is every time that you look at somebody else and say, man, they're really doing X, Y, or Z well, or they're crushing it, or look at how awesome they are. They're probably looking at your photos and saying the same thing about some other area, right? Like, holy cow, she looks good in a bikini and just that's incredible. Or wow, her strength score is through the roof. I wish my strength score was like that or something. Like, so uh, it's always interesting because it always feels like the grass is greener or like, you think somebody's life is different than it actually really is, or their thought process is different. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun. How have you managed to like, look at somebody like somebody in the group or, or whatever, and be inspired versus like being um, a little bit more down about it? Cause sometimes, you know, you see somebody and the comparison kicks in and you think, oh, I can't do that. And it causes people to stop or to spiral or to want to give up. How have you managed to allow it to inspire you versus take away from, from, from you? Well, I think, first of all, the group is like very supportive, right? And really encouraging. So, uh, I mean, you just have like a great group of clients. So that, that makes a huge difference. Um, but also like every single one of us is built differently. Um, while I can maybe have some people that I put on a pedestal and say like, oh gosh, I would really, really love to look like this person. Like I I'm, I'm not that person, or maybe that person's a fitness influencer and this is their full-time job. And uh, it's, this is obviously not my full-time job. Um, or like how to dialed in on their diet are they? And how many hours are they spending in the gym? It's like, um, I have to have realistic expectations for myself and what I can do, but um, but I love seeing people like crushing their workouts and, you know, posting their recipes and it's like, oh, I'm going to, I want to try that. Or, you know, like, oh, this, this person, um, you know, got better time under tension. Like, oh, I'm going to work on that next time. So, um, it, it's, it's, I, I try not to get too caught up in like, oh, you know, I'll probably never be able to look like that person. It's like, no, I'm not meant to look like that person. I'm, I'm me. So, but I can, I can look at what they do and be inspired by that. That's amazing. Just a couple more things. One, you mentioned, you know, going on vacation or going on a trip, you mentioned Disney and, and kind of being able to indulge and do the things that you want. How are you able to do that without completely sabotaging yourself, but also without, being able to spiral out of control and come back and reclaim your habits quickly. Because I say this all the time, it's not that whether it's me or somebody else doesn't ever cheat on their diet, quote unquote. It doesn't mean that I never have a cupcake or a drink or anything. It's just that I'm able to reclaim the habits faster. So how have you been able to, again, enjoy without sabotage and also reclaim habits very quickly when you get back? Yeah. So when we were there, you know, part of the enjoyment of that trip is the food, right? Um, so I tried to make good choices when I could. So at breakfast, I would try to have something high protein. Like I'd try to get some eggs in. Um, our resort had like a steel cut oats. So I'd have some of those in the morning. So I tried to make good choices. I tried to get a salad when I could. Um, lots of steps and I didn't miss workouts. So like I also just for made me feel better to get up and go to the hotel gym every morning and, and get a workout in before the day. Um, so it kind of made me feel a little less guilty about those times that I did indulge, but like also I enjoyed it, right? Like I tried not to beat myself up too much about it. Like I, I ate ice cream and, you know, cupcakes and things when I was there. And, um, and I really did, you know, try to mindfully, be present and, and enjoy those bites. Um, and then when I got back home, it's like, I kind of missed the way I normally eat. So it was pretty easy to get back on track because I like what I eat at home on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, again, I, I wasn't coming home to three big chicken breasts every day, which I wouldn't have looked forward to. Like I actually really like the food that I eat. So it was relatively easy to get back into the habit again. Okay. Two more questions. Um, the, the next question is, um, you mentioned some struggles and obstacles. What were some of the struggles and obstacles and how did you overcome them? You don't have to get into all of them, but like just maybe the top couple that you can think of or that are the most, you know, top of mind. Yeah. So I think a lot of them we've already touched on, right. Which was like seeing the scale go up and kind of reframing my mindset around, um, you know, that, that wasn't, all a bad thing. Um, and 
you know, I sort of like got a little bit lax with my diet and I wasn't tracking things as closely. And I was like, gosh, I'm, I'm, I've gained more weight than I thought I would. And then I went back and I was like, well, you, you know, you had a little piece of a crumble cookie and you had some of this and that and you weren't logging that stuff. And like you were doing that every day. So like those things I, it was adding up. Um, so I think just like, again, that, that discipline and I'm, I'm at a phase now where I eat pretty much the same thing every day and I've got it all memorized and I don't track, you know, distinctly unless I'm making a change. Like if I'm changing my macros in some way. Um, so that's kind of freeing not to have to go log everything. And, um, but yeah, I had, I, I would say I got a little bit, mm, a little bit lenient with my macro tracking, like in the fall around, around Christmas time or a lot of treats. So how did you double down on that and, and be able to make that shift? Because a lot of people, that's the shift that then spirals them out of control and they're never, never able to course correct. How did you manage to course correct? Was it just like dialing in mindset? Was it like a commitment you made with Greg? Like, Yeah, I hit a threshold weight and I was like, don't want to go above that. And when I hit that weight, I was like, okay, time to reel it in. Let's get serious with this again. Um, and then um, did a body scan, didn't love it. So like, then I was like, okay, we've got the data. Like let, now let's, let's reel it in. So, uh, and then I was able to do that. And it, it, and it happened over a period of a couple of months. I was able to get like basically back to where I was at the end of the program. And I think honestly better off because I, I think I have more muscle mass than I did back then it's like i actually don't want to get all the way back down to my lowest weight because i want there to be some muscle there right like so um so yeah just kind of reframing that mindset got it i love that having that like do not go kind of number where it's like if yeah. i hit this defcon 1 i'm really it in <laughs> yeah. like for me that's 210 so like i know if i get to 210 it is it's on so i love that you have that non negotiable for yourself and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they don't have a non-negotiable number. So then they just slide, slide, slides, and they never really say, this is enough. They don't draw the line in the sand. Okay, last thing. I remember you mentioning to me that you've been taking more photos at the beach and, and stuff that, than ever before, and that before you joined the program that you hadn't done that in a while. What's that like? Like, tell me, is, is that boosting confidence? Is it helpful? Like, tell me about it. Yeah, it's funny to take a walk down memory lane because um, we first got our tonal at the end of 2020. So like really pretty um, deep into like pandemic overeating. And Greg and I were both just as kind of fed up with where we were. And it was again, we just hit that point where we we're like, something's got to change. Like this is not OK. We need to make an intervention. So we got the tonal and we kind of built that habit. We really loved it. We were pretty consistent with that for a year, a little over a year. And then um, we were both like, okay, we've like done what we can do with this and we love it. But it's like, as much as we're working out, we're not really feeling like we look like people who work out, <laughs> right? Um, and so that was when we got you involved in that. And now I feel like I, I look like a person who works out, which is like really cool. But I go back and I look, I looked at a picture from 2020 and I have no bikini photos from that time frame uh, on purpose. Um, but I went back and I looked at a picture of myself like in a sleeveless, like a tank top and shorts. And I thought at the time that I looked pretty good. And I go back now and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, not a bad picture, but it's like, I just can see how far I've come. And then after we got the tonal, there were a couple uh, pseudo bikini pictures where you can't really see much um, in in 2021 because um, I couldn't even really find a good pre, you know, that time frame um, to compare to. But then obviously we have like our, our starting pictures from when we from when we started working with you. Um, but wow, like it's shocking to see um, that change. Uh, especially compared to back in 2020. So uh, I don't even think I've shared those pictures with you. Maybe I'll have to send those to you <laughs> so you can kind of see. But yeah, um, so we had already lost a little bit of weight with just tonal before we got you involved and then like just obviously accelerated significantly once we hired you. Has it all been worth it? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, again, it's 
yeah, I, the aesthetics are great. Like I love looking in the mirror and being proud, like not just of the way I look, but like knowing what it took to get there and the dedication to myself. And like also with, you know, have uh, my spouses in this too. And so like, we've been each other's cheerleaders this whole time. And, um, and, you know, like checking in with each other, how was your, how was this new phase? How was your first workout? You know, um, and to be able to check in with each other and, and hold each other accountable. Um, but really, um, it, it's, this is truly one of the best things that we have ever done for ourselves, like without question. Which is why we will continue to work with you until you get sick of us. <laughs> I appreciate it. I really do. But I more so just appreciate you being such an inspiration to so many people because this is exactly why I wanted to have you on again is because people see your photos and they're like, oh my gosh, like this is incredible. Which is crazy to me. Like somebody actually wrote like goals under my, under my picture. Like what is my life? That, yeah. That's just mind blowing. This is you. This is who you've become. Incredible, right? Can't believe it. And so you are this example to so many people. You're so inspiring. You're such a leader. And I just appreciate it. And I just wanted to hear straight from the source because I give my take, of course, uh, you know, based on our conversations and everything. Well, this is what's required. But it's it's really, I think, refreshing to talk to somebody who's going through it and hear them say it because everyone could say, well, of course, Jackson, right? But to hear it from you is even better. So I'm just so glad that you agreed to do this. And I'm just so thankful for the tips, the tricks, the mindset, just everything that you kind of spoke about and being vulnerable here and sharing, because I know it's going to add a lot of value for a lot of people. You're an incredible human being. You're so awesome. Obviously, you're very humble as well, because you know you look amazing. You're strong, you're fit, you're incredible, and you're such an example. So thank you for all the hard work, for trusting me, for investing in yourself, and for just being you because you're awesome. And I'm just so grateful our paths cross. So thank you. Thank you so much, Coach, for everything. And uh, and I, <laughs> I'm certainly no expert here, right? Like I am a work in progress, just like everybody else. So um, I, I'm honored that you would ask me to have this conversation. You're an expert because you've done it, right? So at least you're an expert on yourself. And the other thing is, is that because you're so humble, it makes you the exact right person to share the information with others. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome.